What's up everyone, Mark here, and today we're talking about fire building. As an Eagle Scout myself, I can say that among all of the skills a Scout learns, there are few more important than or as useful as fire building. We use fires to cook, to keep warm, and often as a focal point of social gathering. Right now, it can be difficult to safely gather with family and friends, but backyard fire pits allow us to extend the outdoor socializing season well into the winter. Whether we're talking store-bought or homemade fire pits, the same basic safety rules apply. If for whatever reason you're intimidated by or just haven't had good luck with fire building, today we're going to change that. Before we start, I just want to thank you all again so much for your support. It really means so much to me. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Just click the red button down below or the watermark in the corner and be sure to hit the bell icon to get a notification every time I have a new video out. Subscribing is free and it just helps you keep track of when I publish new videos, whether you watch them all or not. All right, let's get started. All right, so first things first, we're gonna talk about safety. So whether you built your fire pit or whether you have a store-bought fire pit, does not matter. Uh, you wanna make sure that it is placed on bare soil or other inflammable materials. So a concrete pad is fine, uh, gravel is okay, uh, stone, uh, kind of like what I have here. Um, and you wanna make sure that the area is free of any combustible material like dry grass or leaves, um, which you can see here, I've gone ahead and uh, raked away leaves in a perimeter around the fire pit. You also want to look up. Are there any trees overhanging your fire pit that have branches that are a little bit low? You don't want those to catch fire. Then uh, perhaps the most important safety rule of all is water. Uh, we need to be able to put out a fire at any time. Now I have a hose on the side of the house right there, easily accessible. I can grab that. It'll only take a minute and I can put out a fire if things got bad. Uh, but even though I have that, I still have a bucket of water uh, standing by just in case, and it's right next to the fire pit so that it's right here. Okay, safety out of the way, let's talk about materials. So, uh, still kind of in the category of safety, um, use barbecue or uh, grill gloves if they'll make you feel a little bit safer, uh, heavy, thick leather glove, uh, just any time you're gonna be, you know, getting really close to the fire or handling things. Um, you know, not a necessity, but um, definitely help with safety. Um, and a stick or some sort of implement. A lot of times your fire pit will come with something like this if it's a store-bought one and you have a spark arrester cover like this. So just something so that you can, you know, again, get the lid on and off. Uh, for our firewood, you need uh, fuel wood, of course. Uh, that's some larger logs for later in the fire and some smaller uh, logs for earlier. Um, fuel wood uh, burns longer, hotter, it's a denser, heavier wood, you can feel it. Uh, then we need uh, kindling and tinder. Tinder is the stuff that burns first, that's the finer stuff, and uh, kindling is the smaller sticks and pieces of wood that burn first to catch the fuel wood on fire. So your uh, tinder gets your kindling going and your kindling gets your fuel wood going. Um, for the kindling, uh, any small dry sticks, fast burning wood, uh, works just fine. These are just some pine sticks, uh, split apart pieces of, of pallet wood is really all it is. Uh, for my tinder, uh, two things, right? So uh, dryer lint works fantastically for this and it's free and you've got tons of it if you have a dryer. Um, so that works great. Um, also wood shavings or uh, sawdust, uh, not necessarily you know powdery sawdust, but shavings like this that are kind of curly cues. Uh, those work really well. Uh, I just use one of these sort of rasp um, files um, on pieces of the pallet wood and make little shavings to go uh, on the side. Um, again, I kind of prefer using dryer lint when I've got it available, um, but you know, you don't always have the best dryer lint, so sometimes uh, this stuff is really best. All right, so as far as building your fire, you want to start in the middle with your tinder, build up on that. We're going to build kind of a, a, a teepee, sort of a, a pyramid type shape, and um, let's just get right to it. So I'm going to grab a little piece. couple pieces and we'll do a little bit of both and put this down right kind of in the middle actually put a little more tinder in there I think We just want to make sure that as we build this out, the bigger pieces of wood aren't we're going to have to lean too much on the 
kindling in the middle. probably do a couple of larger pieces but I'm gonna put some fuel wood in here too first so again we want to start with the smaller pieces even these are a little bit big but I'll work with what we got here I'm gonna make sure your wood is dry too or you're gonna to get a lot of steam and smoke <laughs> so I'm going to get these leaning one way see which way primarily breeze seems to be going that way so I'm gonna leave that side open so that's where the fire can breathe and we'll do just a couple more this quick burning stuff outside all right let's see Now, if the flames are weak, blowing on it gently like that will help get some oxygen in there to, to catch the smaller pieces of wood on fire so that so your tinder doesn't just burn out. And you can see the smaller pieces are already lighting up. And the nice thing about dryer lint uh, for tinder is that it, it, you can see it smolders for a while doesn't just immediately burn up like the, uh, the wood shavings do. Keep feeding little pieces in here. It looks like there's a lot of open space in there, but remember, the fire needs to breathe. And once the logs are going, once your fuel wood is really going, I think this is still a little damp. We're gonna get some smoke from this. Um, you know, once it's really going, then you know you can kind of rearrange stuff. But the point here is to just get the thing burning. Now, I don't necessarily advocate this, but if you really needed to brute force this, <laughs> you can just light a propane torch, and you should have no problem getting the fire started. So as you can see, this is having no problem lighting up. Um, I'm gonna put away a few of my supplies and come back and we'll see how this is doing. And um, before long, we should be able to make some s'mores. So as you can see, knocked it down a bit. The three pieces of fuel wood that were in the uh, sort of teepee formation were all caught up and burning well on the underside, obviously from all of the uh, flames from the kindling and the tinder licking it and um, so in order to get the lid on in a minute here uh, I went ahead and knocked it over and just sort of rearranged it with a stick I uh, got two of them kind of laying on their side with one laying across the top that lets air flow in so that this log will catch on and these will burn hopefully a little more slowly so I put the smaller one up on top and just threw a couple of other uh, pieces of that scrap of pallet wood on there in the meantime all right I'm gonna go get some supplies and let's make us some s'mores All right, I hope I don't have to explain to you how to make s'mores, because, I mean, that's just the simplest thing ever. And hey, I mean, this is a Monday video, so I guess it's kind of like a bonus recipe, if you want to call it that. Uh, all right, so all we're gonna do is take a marshmallow or two. Let's start with one. Get ready with a 
couple of graham crackers. And good old fashioned plain Hershey's chocolate. two marshmallows. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using a metal skewer for this because, you know, heat, but, um, you know, use a stick from the yard, use a bamboo skewer, uh, whatever you like. Just uh, be careful and don't get too close to the fire. Now, some people swear by, uh, you know, lighting it on fire is the right way to do it. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I want it a little brown and toasty, but otherwise just melted enough to make a gooey sandwich with the chocolate and the graham crackers. You know, in the dark, depressing time of year, <laughs> at least this is one thing that we can still do to get together with friends and family. Gather safely outside by the fire, and everybody can enjoy some s'mores. I mean, the s'mores aren't necessary, but why not? Uh, burning wood scraps is fine, but one thing I do want to point out is uh, do not use uh, pressure-treated lumber, uh, especially if you're going to be uh, cooking over fire, or especially if it's something like roasting marshmallows where you're putting the food directly uh, in contact with the flame. Well, I guess that's a sign that it's done. So make this easy. Just place it down. Sandwich it in and yank out the stick. And still have marshmallow on there. Give it a second for the marshmallow to warm up and melt the chocolate. Who doesn't love s'mores? All right, guys, I think that's it for another one. I'm gonna spend some quality time out here relaxing by the fire. And hopefully now you have the information uh, to do the same. Um, if for whatever reason, uh, this is something that's ever intimidated you or you've just never had any luck with it, hopefully now you've got the information that you need to, uh, to do it right uh, and to uh, have a nice, enjoyable fire in your own yard. Uh, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, tell me what you think down in the comments, and I will see you in the next one.